Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Well, last episode, we talked a lot about creating habits and habit hacking. And basically, if you listen to that episode, you were like, I really want to create this change in my life. I want these habits to stick. And you're still looking for that change. But then I was thinking about my own journey and I was thinking about my clients' journeys and how so many people are looking for that change in their life. And the big conclusion and the thing I want to remind you today as we dive into this episode is sometimes creating change isn't about what you need to add, but what you need to release. Hear that again. Sometimes creating change isn't about what you need to add, but about what you need to release, what you need to let go of. I felt this for a very long time and I didn't want to believe it because a lot of times old habits die hard, right? (laughs) Like our, our habits or our mindset or just these beliefs that we've grown up with about ourselves, about the world, we're hesitant to change them. We're fearful of it because we might not know what the act, the answer is. We might not know what that change is going to look like. And the fear of the unknown makes us hold on to what's comfortable, but what's comfortable is not what we need now because we're growing and we're outgrowing the belief system and the current space that we're in. And instead of thinking, well, okay, well, I want to jump into this new thing. I want to create these changes. What can I add? What What's this magic pill? And, and there is no magic pill. And people try again and again to find the perfect program or find the perfect solution to all their problems and and they'll even get sold to it by a ton of advertisements and people just trying to tell you, hey, this is what you've been looking for and it's like the next shiny object, right? And we're constantly chasing that. And then again and again, the change doesn't stick and we're still left feeling empty, sometimes more than before. And that's why I'm talking about this form of change, how it's not always what you need to add, but what you need to let go of. And so I'm going to share kind of my own personal journey with you, as well as just give you some some space for you to think about like, what are some things in your life in your life <laughs> that you you've been holding on to that are no longer serving you. Maybe they did at a time or maybe they never have been serving you. They've always been holding you back and you just need to let them go. And so we're going to kind of touch base on a different, a couple different ones. I'm going to ask you and then I'm going to tell you which ones I've done. It might be that you're holding on to destructive habits. And a lot of times um, I talked about habits in the last episode, but a lot of times the reason we're, we're, stuck in these habit loops that are really not building us up. They're breaking us down. They're keeping us stuck and they're, they're causing more negative self-belief. The reason we're holding on to those destructive habits is because the belief system in ourselves that we've created, we're telling ourselves, see, this is all we're capable of. And we're constantly trying to find things in our lives that we're doing to prove that we're right. See, proving ourselves again and again. See, I told you that that person was going to let me down. I told you that I was going to mess up. I told you it wasn't going to be perfect. And by continuing to break ourselves down and be destructive, we're keeping that narrative alive that, hey, you're not capable of this. Hey, you're not capable of success. And it's crazy. I had a cl- uh, a talk with one of my clients and she was like, the truth is I'm afraid to succeed. And we kind of talked a little bit more about that. Like she's talked about her whole life. She's wanted to feel confident in her skin, but, but I'm like, well, then why are you, why are you afraid to succeed? Why do you feel like you're self-destructing over and over again? And her response was, I'm more afraid of the unknown of what that looks like, the success, what that looks like, what that life looks like, who that person is. I'm more afraid of that unknown than I am of my current reality. And she's comfortable even though she's suffering. She's comfortable even though 
she's unhappy. And the reason she's comfortable with it is because she's lived through it. She's been there. So she knows, hey, it may not be the best thing, but I can settle here and I'll be okay. I'll be all right. But if I go to this unknown territory that I've never explored before with who I am, like if I fail, if there's, if something bad happens, like that fear of the unknown stops her from even wanting to succeed. So every time she gets close, the same thing happens. This negative habit loop, these destructive habits come out, these destructive thoughts come out. And so if you're someone who finds yourself in that cycle again and again and again, whether it's like with binge eating or whether it's just destructive negative self-talk or whether it's causing yourself to fail before you've even really tried and put it put yourself out there, that destructive habits, like that's holding you back. And my first suggestion with this, if you are feeling yourself stuck in that, is to identify what those are and then release them. Be like, okay, I recognize that I have all these things. I'm going to let them go. If there's this fear of the unknown, release that fear and recognize, hey, it's okay to not know all the answers. And then I want you to go back and and visualize, well, what would success look like for me? And if there's a fear of failure, well, what would failure look like for me? And break it, walk it all the way through so that your brain can understand that failure is not the end of the world. And also success can look amazing and it is possible for you. I've talked about visualization on past episodes, but just reminding yourself that if you create that vision of your your highest self and who you want to become, get really specific with it. Get a lot of imagery in. Get really like, who is that person? How do they show up in their lives? Because if you're afraid to go there, if you're afraid to really dig deep and dive into the details of your your highest self, you're holding yourself back. You will stay stuck in those destructive habits. Um, another thing you could be holding on to, and I kind of touched on this already, was you're holding on to false narratives about yourself and your capabilities. So your whole life, whether someone else has told you or you've told you, you're not capable. You're going to fail. There's no way you could do this. Why are you even trying? All of these thoughts, again, whether we've been told them by other people or we've told them to ourselves, those stick with you. It doesn't matter if you were hearing this at five or age 50, those words, that narrative can really, really stick to you. I've talked to so many clients and just with myself, there have been things that people have said to me that that really for a long time did hold me back. Words like, um, I mean, even as a kid, I got made fun of for being overweight. I got called a Dalmatian because of my vitiligo, the white spots on my skin. I I got called Bucky the Beaver because I had braces. And basically, I got told that I wasn't athletic, that I was fat, that I couldn't do these things, that I wasn't like the other girls, that I was in dance class, but I wasn't, I didn't have a dancer body. And I, this is just from a young age. And, and those narratives stuck with me for a really long time to where even when I was first starting out as a trainer, as a fitness instructor, as a trainer, I thought, well, I I don't have the body of a typical like fitness instructor. I could I can't do this or I don't look like everyone or anything like that. That narrative would try and creep back in, right? Even in different times, you might have thought that you've overcome some childhood trauma or just experience that stuck with you, words that stuck with you, but they might come out in a different period in your life when you are feeling lower, um, when you are at a lower energy, maybe this year for you, you're realizing all of those insecurities are coming back. All those false narratives that you thought that you overcame are coming back. And that doesn't mean that you're going backwards. I don't want you to ever assume that that means that you are... um, digressing, digressing, shoot, you know what I mean? Like going backwards in your journey. Um, There's a reason that at this point in time, you're working through this narrative again. And it might be because you need, you're at a higher level and you're at a state where you can work on it even deeper. And it's going to be more difficult, but it's going to be worth it because you'll be even stronger on the other end. And I tell myself that because I do have narratives that come back up and I have worked through them, but then you experience it in a new state. You're in a higher state, but there's still something that you need to work through. And so continuing to release those false narratives, call them out. I've talked about calling out your inner mean girl. That's very similar. If you haven't listened to that episode, go listen to it. But just all those ideas that we've been told or that we think about ourselves that are just negative and tearing ourselves down, we need to release that idea. We need to let go of that and remind ourselves 
It's okay to not be perfect and it's okay to be just as you are today. Right now, you are okay. I already talked about this, but this one's huge. It's the the fact that maybe you're holding on to the fear of the unknown and that's keeping you from changing. And so I talked about with my client how she was more fearful of the unknown, even what that success looked like, that she just decided to stay comfortable in honestly, in a place where she was suffering and she wasn't feeling good about herself, but she'd at least been there and lived through it. So she thought, okay, I can just stay here. This is like my safe space. And I've worked with a lot of women who are trying to lose weight. And honestly, they didn't know what it would be like to lose the weight. And there was this fear Um, Because there was honestly like a protection behind having that extra weight and reminding themselves like I can always put up this front to be funny and I can always put up this front to be the happy person all the time and all these different like personality traits that instead of being like a part of us, they actually become a wall that kind of keeps keeps us safe from the outside world. And so um, I don't know if you've created that in order to avoid the unknown, but I know personally it can be very easy to do that. It can be very easy to hide behind walls in order to try and stay safe because you're afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of what could happen. And if you feel that way, remind yourself that you're capable. One thing that's a really good exercise to do if you do have fear of the unknown or fear of something like not working out for you and you're wanting to change, but you're like, but what if I fail? What if I fail this? Actually go through the exercise of like, well, if I did fail, it's okay. Like it's not the end of the world. Like maybe I'll just be back exactly where I am right now. And that's not the end of the world because I'm dealing with it right now. I'm in my present state and I'm functioning. So it's okay. Um, Another exercise you can do if you're, you're, if there's a fear of the unknown and you're just not able to trust yourself, you're just like, I don't know if I should make these changes. I don't know if I'm making the right decision. I don't know if this is going to work out. Just all of these like doubts that are coming up over and over and over again. What I suggest doing with that um, fear is basically think back to like in the past, at least three different instances that you, you thought, there's no way that this can work out. Like it could be that you were interviewing for a job that was maybe above your experience level or that you found a partner or a friend or relationship that you didn't think you would find or that you were, you got through some adversity in the past that you were like, that was one of the hardest situations ever. I never thought I would have gotten through that, but then you did, right? You showed up for yourself and you made it happen. Go ahead and find some of those instances in the past where you made it happen, even when it seemed impossible, and remind yourself who the F you are because you're capable. You've done it before. You can do it again. Even if it's a different scenario, showing yourself that you've gotten through this before, you've gotten through hard times. That's why I love journaling so much is because I'll actually go back in my journal to times when I was struggling, like times when I was just starting my business and I was quitting the gym and I was like, I don't know if this is the right decision. I'm so afraid to leave this gym job and I don't know what if I fail on my own and just all this fear. And then the crazy thing is, is I didn't let that hold me back. I dove in head first. I was like, well, I mean, yeah, I might fail, but I can always come back. And I am so much happier on the other end, so much so that I'm constantly striving to challenge myself and put myself in uncomfortable situations, hence the name, Confidently Uncomfortable for the podcast. Um, But that is where we truly grow in this time. So find times in the past to help you continue to pursue things like this in the future when you're working towards change. It's unknown, it's scary, but it's growth and it's helping you get closer to who you were meant to be on this world. Some reminders that I want to give you today. The confidence you crave is within you. Right now, where you're sitting right now, where you're listening to this, whether you're walking, you're driving, you're cleaning, whatever it is, the confidence that you want for yourself, you're craving it. It's already within you. It's already right here. But doubt and fear get in your way. And I say this with so much love because I have been there. I have allowed doubt and fear to hold me back and tell me, you're not worthy. You're not capable. Who do you think you are 
to try and put yourself out there? Who do you think you are to try and walk confidently and not, not, um, not cave to normal beauty standards? Like, who do you think you are trying to pull that outfit off? And guess what? I remind myself again and again, why not me? Why not me? I absolutely have what it takes and you have absolutely, say it to yourself, I have what it takes to show up confidently in my life. I have what it takes to create change that lasts. I have what it takes. I just need to release that fear and doubt. That change you're seeking is not going to happen until you learn to let go. I say this (laughs) knowing how hard it is to let go. Letting go and releasing these things you've been carrying for so long, maybe years, maybe your entire life you've been carrying them. Letting go is really what's going to make the difference. Um, My therapist made a really great analogy with us, and it was... You're you're carrying all these things every day. You're you're think of it like you're going on a walk throughout your day, and you have a backpack, and you're putting these rocks in your backpack, and every rock represents something that you're having to deal with, whether it's something that you necessarily need to let go or something that you honestly have to deal with. But you're putting it in your book bag, so you're like, okay, here is my work situation I need to deal with. Here is my family situation. Here's something else I'm dealing with. Um, Here's throw in a rock for some anxiety. You know, let's throw in some rock for some fear. Let's throw in some rock for (laughs) just anything you can think of that you're carrying. And then just recognize, I don't have to carry all of this. What is something I can let go of today? Maybe that like maybe that anxiety that you're feeling about the future and the unknown, maybe we're just going to take that rock, rock out for today and focus our mindset on some other things. We're not necessarily getting rid of it cuz anxiety is hard to get rid of, but we're just going to take that rock out and not carry that with us today. So, instead of thinking like This idea of release has to be like, it's gone forever. I've cured myself of all anxiety and fear and doubt. Like instead of that, just literally look at that doubt or that fear and personify it into that rock, right? And you're like, okay, this is what I'm feeling. I'm literally holding my hand out right now in case you were wondering. I'm holding my hand out and I'm holding in a pretend rock and I want you to do that. And you're doing it and you're looking at like, this is the fear I've been holding on to. This fear that I'm going to fail. This fear that I'm I'm not worthy of this. I'm looking at this and I'm recognizing this is fear, but this fear is not a part of me. So today I'm choosing not to carry that fear with me. And you set that rock down, you put in your backpack and you go on that journey. Okay. You've released it. Now at some point you might pick another rock back up. It's a different thing and that's okay. You will cross that when you get there. Don't stress about it now. It's in the future, but knowing that you've done that exercise of taking the rock and setting it down, that is going to help you continue to do that again and again. And that is the process of letting go. (sighs) Oh, I hope this is helpful for someone. This is something that has been very helpful for me. So if I can help just one person listening to this, let me know. Seriously, I, I, I record these for you guys, honestly, because I get great feedback. And if this is something you're like, wow, this resonated with me, screenshot this and share it with a friend that you feel like needs to hear it with a friend that maybe has been struggling to take control of their life and and create that change. And maybe they are holding on to some things that, that they need to let go of. So feel free to screenshot, share and tag me because I love to hear from you guys and get feedback. We're not done yet. We're wrapping up in the next few minutes. So last few things that I want to kind of touch base on that you might need to be letting go of. So I'm saying these because they're all things that I've dealt with. um, And I want to hear if one of them resonates with you more than the other, then I'm glad that I was able to get it out. So another big thing that a lot of people need to let go of is letting go of the outcome, future outcomes and trust. You've done your part. You've done what you need to do to make an outcome happen that you want. Now it's time for God to deliver. God, the universe, whatever you believe, release the need for complete control. Because it's, I talk about taking control of your life, but in the end, 
you need to release it. You need to recognize, yes, I have control over my actions, but that timeline, when things are coming, they're going to come in perfect timing because we are not capable of recognizing when the perfect time is for these things to come together, but just know and trust that 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 outcome is going to work out exactly how it needs to in its time. Trust that. Also, let go of perfection as the only way. (laughs) Perfection is never the way when you're going about doing something. There's never going to be, I've said it again and again, there's never going to be this perfect time, this perfect scenario, this perfect situation. You're never going to be perfect. So instead of idolizing perfection that you see in other people's journeys, remember their journey was not perfect. Maybe they're just showing you the the pretty side of things, but there's an underneath that they had to grunt and work through and, and just really get dirty to work towards their journey. And their struggle has been there even if they don't show it. So instead of trying to idolize other people's perfection and compare your own life to them, recognize that it's not real. And then also recognize failure is a part of the journey. So instead of fearing failure, release your fear of failure and remind yourself, this is a part of the journey. I'm learning from this. Every time you get up again and again and again, you are learning from this. And that lesson can often be stronger than the success itself. And I say that on a personal level. I've failed with so many different endeavors and I've learned so much from every one of those failures and I'm able to help other people because of that. I've tried all the diets. I've had the mental struggles. I've dealt with all that. But because of that, I'm able to be stronger on the other side of things. And that's something I'm very proud of. So instead of being shameful and fearful of failure, I'm proud of it. And I know that I've worked through it and I'm going to be very open with you all about it because I don't want you to think that it's just this perfect like, oh, I'm confident now. Oh, I'm successful now. Like, no, (laughs) it's definitely you work through it. It takes time and failure is a part of it. Another thing that a lot of people need to let go of, so many of my clients deal with this, let go of the guilt that you've been carrying. Listen. We carry this guilt often whenever we're like self-sabotaging or speaking negatively towards ourselves or giving up too early after we said we were going to really do it this time. And the guilt that we feel every time we mess up or struggle or talk down to ourselves, that guilt is not helping. That guilt is just putting us down more and telling ourselves, see, I told you that you were going to fail. Like, how is that guilt helpful? It's not. It's not. It's just, it's something that you just need to let go of. So I want you to take a breath right now. (sighs) Say, it's okay. It's okay to be just as I am today. Whether it's feeling overwhelmed or struggling or having a hard time, it's okay. It's okay if you have days where you're not the nicest to yourself, as long as you remind yourself that you are working through this. You're not stuck here. And these actions and things that you do, these failures, they don't define you. They just help build you up. Release the weight of that guilt. Oh, this is a big one too. We're going to wrap it up soon, but I appreciate you guys just being here in this because it's a, it's, it's hard to talk through some of this because it's very close to home, but let go of the timeline that you see with your life. (laughs) So what I mean by that timeline is a lot of times we think, okay, well, I'm this many years old. I should have my life together. (laughs) Like wherever you're at, you're thinking that it doesn't matter where you are. You just think that. And it's because we set this timeline for ourselves, whether like we've created this timeline on our own or whether we feel like society is putting pressure on us. Like, all right, you need to have your house knit by now. You need to have all your debt paid off. You need to have all your kids now, or you need to have kids or you need to be super successful and make this much money or whatever it is. There's just this timeline that like, okay, you're behind. You're like, wherever you're at, you're behind. Right. And that timeline is something that is not helping you. Comparing where you're at on your journey to someone else's is not helping you. You need to believe that the universe always has your best interest at heart. Always. And things are coming in due time. 
the perfect timing for you, not anyone else for you. And it might look different than everyone else's timeline, but it's going to come together exactly when it needs to for you. So release that constant comparison to your classmates that you're seeing on Facebook or the people you see on social media or your friends or even your siblings or your other family and just continue on your path because you are exactly where you need to be. You just have to keep going. Okay. If you spend all your time looking right and left at other people, you are going to, (laughs) you're going to get dizzy and fall down more than you have to. Whereas if you just focus forward on what you're working towards and every step you're taking, you are going to see how far you come and you're going to come so much farther and you're going to do it your own way. And that is the best way to do it because it's going to feel genuine. It's going to feel true and it's going to feel honest to who you are and who you want to be. So that's a timeline that a lot of people hold on to and letting go of that is going to be huge. Reminding yourself that you don't need to be anyone but yourself. That's a way, good, really good way to do this. And then also remind yourself that the universe always has my best interest at heart and will provide to me in perfect timing. Saying that to yourself is going to also help you release that timeline, that that hold that you have onto the perfect timeline that you think you need to have. And just to wrap this up, I'm not naive to think that everyone is at the same starting point when they're working towards change in their lives. I know that when you're listening to this, you have a story, you have a narrative, you have an upbringing that's different than mine. All of us are coming from a different space. So many of you not only have internal struggles and narratives that you're dealing with, but institutions and systems that have been around for thousands of years, hundreds of years, trying to hold you back, trying to, quote unquote, put you in your place or keep you down. And even though your starting place might be different than the person next to you, I'm going to say this to you with the utmost confidence. And I need you to listen because we're ending this soon. You have what it takes within you. No matter what life has thrown your way, you will get stronger every time you get up. Again and again, keep getting up. You will get stronger. Let go and rise up. You are ready. Let's do this. I hope you feel inspired by this message. I hope you understand that change takes time, releasing these different things take time, and just give yourself grace and love and compassion as you work towards this change going forward. Recognize what are those things in my life that I need to release today? What is one thing I can let go of or at least release the hold of a little bit today? Because you are so capable. You just need to get out of your own way and keep going. Thank you guys for being um, just so amazing listening to this episode. I would absolutely love for you to share this podcast with a friend, with family members, with people that you feel like need it. Share it with your audience. If you have social media, screenshot this and share it. Be sure to tag me. Give me any feedback, anything that really resonated with you. I love connecting with you all at the Confidently Uncomfortable social media. You can check out the different handles. I'll share them with you in the show notes and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot, support at JagoFit360.com, for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.